Hello, fellow sim racers, it's me, Soup. I actually don't like that name that I decided to use. It was really because I didn't want to use my real name, but it's starting to wear me out. I'm not feeling it anymore. Soup is my online name. Anyways, it's Adam back with another video on Pedal Haptic Settings in Sim Hub. Mr. Brett Noakes asked a question via a comment in one of my videos about fine tuning Sim Hub's haptic feedback settings. And he said, Hey man, great video. How do we go about doing custom channels, say like for Pedal Haptics or Rev Limit? So I thought, man, that's an interesting question. How do we go about doing that? I started digging in and it turns out it is possible. SimHub offers a lot of effects that are pre programmed into the software for Pedal Haptics. But if you want something different, if you want something unique, if you want something customized, you have to dig into the data a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so here we are in the sim to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about, about how SimHub takes data, telemetry, whatever you want to call it. It's just numbers from the sim and translates it into variables that you can program your hardware with in SimHub. You're gonna open up SimHub and you go down to available properties on the left side. You can see all of the different variables that are shooting numbers over to SimHub right now from iRace. Let's just look at this. Let's see if we can find something. Let's look at game data engine ignition on. It says it's computed. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe somebody can explain in the comments, but right now it's set to zero. I'm gonna flick the ignition on in the game and we'll see what happens. Now you can see it was a little delayed, but it went from zero to one as soon as we flicked the ignition on. Let's go ahead and start the engine up. Now to answer Brett's question about can you program a haptic feedback in your pedals whenever the car hits its rev limiter. Let's give that a shot. So we're going to look for, let's, let's look up RPM. Here we go. We have max RPM 7,400. How about the red line setting? This looks like a percentage right here. We could probably use that. So it looks like it red lines at 95%, which would be, it gives you the red line RPM 7,030 RPMs. It also has a value right here that has RPM red line reach. So let's see if we smash on the gas, if that goes to one, I'm guessing it will, especially since we're in neutral. You see, there it goes, it turned to one. Whenever we hit that rev limiter, it goes to one. So we can use that value to program haptic feedback in our pedals. But how do we do that? Let's go do it right now. Do you hear that in the background? You hear the, there's people talking in the pit. The sound, I sit in the pit a lot and mess with settings and stuff to make videos. And so I listen to this quite a bit and I always wonder what they're saying. We got to turn it up really loud. We should be able to hear it. I know they're not cheap, he says. It loops over and over and over again if you listen. I don't know how it knows, he said. I know they're not cheap. That's what he says right after that. I don't know what else they're saying. They're talking they're saying something. I want to know what they're saying. I want that sound. I want that that clip from my racing. I want them to tell me what they're saying. Anyways, moving on. To make this effect, we're gonna go into our devices menu and then we're gonna go down to our Sim Magic Haptic Pedals Reactor. Haptic Pedals React HPR, whatever they're called. If you're not using the devices menu for this, you should be. I think it works better than the Shake It Motors. The Shake It Motors and Shake It Bass Shakers is really for haptics on your rig. These pedal reactors, they work best in the devices menu, in my opinion. Feel free to disagree. So the first thing we need to do is add a new effect and we're gonna click the add effect button and then we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna add a custom effect. You can see the custom effect shows up way down here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and enable it. And then we're going to get into the specifics for this one. So once you're in the custom effects settings, you're going to go to the effect settings, hit edit. After you hit edit, this window is going to pop up and you want to use NCALC. So click the use NCALC button. And then in the NCALC formula, 
you want to paste what I've just put in there and I'll put this in the comments or you can copy it if you want to but now you can see the raw result so what is the output that's coming from the game whenever I put the inputs into the game and, and so to make sure that's right we know we can see right now that I'm not stepping on the gas so we're not hitting the red line but if I hit that red line you can see it now goes to 100% and it's important that it goes the variable actually goes from 0 to 1 but we've reset it with this line of code to make it go from 0 to 100 in dim hub and it's important you can see right here formulas must return a value from 0 to 100 and the reason we need to do that is because for things like traction loss and wheel slip and impacts on the road or bumps on the road it's not an all or nothing vibration it's varying levels from 0 to 100 and SimHub needs that in order to decide how hard to shake the motor so now that that's in there we don't really need to put it in the front right front uh, rear left or rear right we really can just put it in one that would be if we were programming uh like four motors on our actual rig this is just for our haptic pedals and we can we either want it on or off there's no level in between right so now that i've programmed that in there if i hit this rev limiter we should see live effects come out and there it is we can see the vibration every time i hit the gas and nail the gas we hit that rev limiter you can see the pedals are vibrating and now all we have to do is fine tune this right how how do we want it to feel so we could change the frequency if we want it to be more buzzy then we could increase the frequency to 50 if we wanted it to be more of a thunk then we could lower the frequency to say 20 and then it would be very thunky you guys can probably hear it in the background right and then the lower we go the more jackhammery it'll feel that's the best way to describe it and then we can also decide do we want it in the throttle do we want it in the brake do we want it in the clutch do we want it in all three and then if we go to the hardware settings in the device we can decide whether or not we want it to only be when pressed whether it's the i mean the only thing that really makes sense is to put it on the throttle right so you could make it you could block the effect when it's not pressed now let's do one that's a little bit more challenging like say say we want the clutch to vibrate whenever we get to the bite point for the particular car that we're in. So we're in the FF 1600. Now SimHub doesn't have a value for the bite point for each car. So that's something that we're gonna have to figure out on our own. So in order to figure that out, we need to look at the available properties again. So let's go back to available properties. We'll type in clutch. And you can see right now, this game data clutch is at zero. Now, as I hit my clutch, you can see it goes from zero to 100%, depending on where my clutch is. So what we wanna know is where is the bite point for the FF1600? Well, let's turn on the car and let's go to first gear. We're now in first gear. So now we're gonna give it a little bit of gas and we're gonna let the clutch out and we're gonna see at what point real slow see we're going down real slow we'll see at what point does the car start to move whoop we're going backwards that's not good we want to go forwards it looks like that might be the bite point right there like 83.7 i'm gonna i'm gonna say 80 to be safe i think i think i'm gonna say 80 just to be safe so we'll go back to the effects menu. We will go ahead and add a new effect again. Go to custom effect, hit add, go down here, enable the effect of course. And then in the effect settings, we'll use another NCALC formula. So if we want the clutch to vibrate around the bite point, then we would program this into sim hub and this is just saying if the following is true vibrate at 100 if it's not vibrate at zero so if the clutch is between 78 and 82 percent we're going to vibrate if not we're not going to vibrate let's see if that works oh and i can feel it right there let's see if i can hold the clutch right in there 
let's make it a nice fine vibration. There we go. We're vibrating. Now let's see if it works with the car. Let's get this out of the way. Let's see. We're going to start the car up. Now what this should do for us is as I put the car into first and I let the clutch go, giving it a good amount of gas, I should be able to feel a vibration as soon as the car starts moving forward. And it does. I honestly wouldn't use this effect. I, I wouldn't use it. I mean, you can do it, right? But I, I don't think I'd use it. <laughs> so just, just answering the question, I mean, I think it would take some tweaking to really get it right per car. If you wanted to program it for standing starts or something, it totally makes sense. Um, but I, I probably wouldn't use this one. I do like the rev limiter effect. I think that one's kind of interesting and that's a different thing. But the point of this video is just to show everybody that with the available properties page, you can practically program SimHub to vibrate your haptic pedal feedbacks on any value that's coming out of your sim, right? You could have your pedals vibrate when you have, uh, you know, fuel remaining time of, you know, one lap or something like that. I'm not a genius. I didn't figure this out on my own. I used a combination of Google and ChatGPT to figure out all the programming to make this work. So if I can do that, anybody can look it up and make it work. So armed with chat GPT and a little bit of understanding of how SimHub works and how telemetry data is fed from your sim racing game of choice into SimHub, you can pretty much program your haptic pedals to do whatever you want them to do. So now that I've taught you guys how to do this, what kind of custom effects are you going to program into your pedals? Let me know in the comments. I think that's good enough.